Would an image of Arabia ever feel complete without the iconic form of a camel and its rider? We're in Oman, on the edge of the Sharkia Sands Desert. In this part of Arabia, 6,000 years ago, the camel was domesticated for the very first time. Camels and humans embarked on a relationship that would span millennia. But in the 1960s, a massive transformation swept the whole of the Arab world. The role of the camel was suddenly undermined. The discovery of oil brought sudden and unimaginable wealth. With the money came technology, and the region underwent one of the most rapid transformations in the modern world. But there was one machine in particular that would jeopardize the ancient partnership of camel and man more than any other. Despite the 6,000-year-old bond, the car was quickly adopted as a much superior form of transport. Something needed to be done if the camel was to survive. The answer was camel racing. Once on the brink of dying out, camels now have the potential to turn their owners into millionaires. Three of these camels are about to take us into their new and alien world. Saraba is a three-year-old female, hoping to get to the big final race of the season. North is also heading for the big final, but while their ambitions may be the same, these two camels are worlds apart. North is owned by one of the country's richest and most successful camel trainers. Saraba's trainer is a local small-timer who struggles to pay for his camel's upkeep. Ariam is a baby just starting out on her racing career. It's a dangerous time for a camel. Hopefully she'll impress her owner enough to stay out of the cooking pot. We're going to take an unusual journey into the lives of the camels that race to find out how this ancient creature and its human companion has adapted to fit a modern picture of Arabia. It's October and the beginning of the racing season. Saraba's taking part in one of the first big national races. She comes from a small farm in this valley, but today she's getting herself noticed. She's in second place and crosses the line just two strides after the winning camel. She wins the equivalent of 800 US dollars. Her trainer, Ali, seems happy. It was a very close race and a great way to begin the season. Back home, it's bath time for Saraba. Although she did well today, Saraba's last season ended badly. She narrowly missed out on a big prize and was set free to roam the desert. But it looks like taking her back was the right decision. If Saraba continues to do well, she could turn Ali's fortunes around. <coughs> <laughs> Ali sits down for coffee with his friends, a ritual that's carried out endlessly throughout the day. 
All of the camel trainers in this valley are Bedou. They are the nomadic camel rearing people of the Arabian desert. <laughs> Socializing and sharing the news has always been an important part of daily life. The only difference now is the way in which they seek shade from the baking sun. Before the arrival of oil, the Bedou lived in the desert rearing camels and goats. As well as providing transport and food, camels were the currency of the desert. The Bedou had few possessions and moved around in constant search of good grazing. For some people, Nothing much has changed. Salim is in fact one of the last Bedou still living the nomadic way of life. He moved his house here two weeks ago, and visitors must rely on any passing locals to help them find it. But these days, there are not many locals left. <laughs> Salim goes to check on his camels, and recognizing his car, they come over to greet him. The Bedou have a deep affection and respect for their camels. But if a camel's not doing its job, it may find itself becoming a meal for the family. <laughs> Ariam is 18 months old, and this is her first racing season. It's a cutthroat business. A couple of bad runs, and Ariam is unlikely to make it through the season in one piece. Just across the valley, there's a very different kind of operation. While Ariam is just starting out, Ten very experienced camels are returning home from a race. They are trained by Abdullah, one of the country's wealthiest camel trainers. Abdullah's made his fortune by purchasing young camels from this valley and training them up into top racers. Bentish. Hello. His camels are amongst the best in the country and routinely win prizes all over Arabia. But at the end of the season, there is one prize that he wants most of all. At the big final race, the winning camels will be bought by His Majesty the Sultan of Oman. North is currently Abdullah's favorite. She might not be pretty, but Abdullah thinks she has royal potential. Ali has similar hopes for Saraba. Although she comes from a more humble home, any good camel has a chance of becoming a royal. Camel racing has only existed since the 1970s, but there's a much older form that's still practiced to this day. Salim has come from his desert home to take part in this morning's event. The biggest challenge here is not so much the race, but getting on to the angry camel. <laughs> It's not really a race, and the point is not to win, but to remain side by side without overtaking the other rider. It's all a test of skill and technique, and a chance to show off.
When Salim was a child, this was a common sight in the desert. He's not interested in the serious business of modern camel racing and prefers to keep the old traditions alive. Today, Salim and his camels have another kind of engagement. All over the country, something extraordinary is happening. Hundreds of trucks have been deployed to collect camels from all over Oman. They're about to embark on a very unusual journey. This year is the 40th anniversary of the Sultan's reign. As part of the National Day celebrations, he's invited all the camels in the country to visit him at his palace. The camels disappear in a police convoy to be reunited with their owners at the other end. At their campsite, Salim sings a song that represents the lollop of a slow-walking camel. <laughs> when night falls, they'll roll out their blankets and sleep right here under the stars with their camels. <laughs> Some of the younger members of the group copy the traditional songs and dances, while others film it on their mobile phones. Quite what will happen at the palace tomorrow is a mystery. All they know is to meet at the roundabout into town tomorrow afternoon. Meanwhile, there are some camels that will not be taking part in tomorrow's festivities. As dawn breaks back in the valley, hundreds of baby camels are led to the racetrack. One of the camels at the track this morning is 18-month-old Ariam. It's important that the camels aren't stressed before they race, and Saeed tries to keep Ariam calm. Young camels are small, and used to be ridden by child jockeys. When this was banned, children were replaced by mechanical robot riders. Ariam is wary of the robot. She knows what's coming next. As she joins her group at the start, it's clear that all these young camels are feeling tense. They push against the starting rope. The handlers try to calm them down, but they're losing control. Saeed drives down to the start line, but gets there too late. Some of the handlers manage to hang on, but three of the camels have bolted. One of them is Ariam. As the remaining camels are lined up for a restart, Ariam crosses the finish line. She's disqualified, and Saeed will have to wait two weeks before she can race again. But Saeed is quietly confident. 
Ariam's parents were both good racing camels and so is her sister. If you don't do well one week, then hopefully next time will be better. Ali's also missed out on the trip to the palace to stay home and look after Saraba, who'll be racing again soon. He mixes up energy drinks for his camels. Camel racing provides a very unpredictable income, and Ali's supplies are running low. Like many racing camels, Saraba's not owned by her trainer, her owner lives elsewhere and has chosen Ali to train and race her. He's paid a monthly fee and gets a cut of any winnings or sales. Saraba's owner was already offered $60,000 for her last season, which he declined, hoping to hit the jackpot in this year's final. It was a risky move, but one that could pay off. Winning camels are bought by the Sultan for up to half a million dollars. A life-changing amount of money for a trainer like Ali. <laughs> Ali and his nephew discuss the food portions, which vary depending on each camel's racing schedule. Saraba's racing again soon, and so her portion's been reduced. Another camel looks at his trough and decides that it's just not going to be enough. No one seems to notice as his poor neighbour loses half her breakfast. Finally, he's caught red-handed and is made to pay up. Saraba's muzzled to stop her snacking between meals and is tied up for a mid-morning nap. Whether rich or poor, Camels all look pretty much the same. North may be one of the most valuable camels in the country, but right now it looks like racing is the last thing on her mind. While some camels are carrying out their normal daily routines, others are being dressed up in their finery. At his palace in a town called Mana, the Sultan waits for his visitors to arrive.
It's the largest gathering of camels ever seen in Oman. The fence that's been assembled to contain them doesn't hold up for very long. 4,000 camels and their riders spill out into the palace grounds. The Sultan's been watching the whole display from inside the palace. Through the haze, a distant figure can be seen in a far turret. To show his appreciation, he has pledged $1,000 to be paid for each and every camel that has turned up today. When the crowds eventually disperse, Salim searches for the truck that will take his camels home. Camels are famous for their ability to cross deserts, but why make the effort when there's a much quicker option? Only a few travel home on camelback. Saraba's now on her way to the next big race. She'll travel for two hours on the back of this truck to a campground near the racetrack. But first, the camels must be loaded. And everyone has their own ideas about how it should be done. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, they manage to close the door and they're off. As soon as they arrive, Ali and his nephew Nasser start digging stakes into the ground. Camels have a tendency to wander off when no one's looking and need to be tied up securely. While Saraba's getting used to her new surroundings, back home, Ariam's also getting ready for a big day. She gulps down her energy drink and seems to have developed quite a taste for it. Tomorrow, Ariam will race again and hopefully won't be disqualified this time. For Ali, it may not be a matter of life or death, but this time tomorrow, he could be $1,200 better off. At the track, Saraba's robots tested. It's operated by remote control and holds a walkie-talkie so Ali can talk to Saraba during the race. These robot riders may seem a little bizarre, but they're safe, light and economical compared to their human predecessors. 
In fact, many of the children used for racing were not much bigger than the robots used today. Children as young as three were made to race and were stuck to the saddles using Velcro. When this practice was finally outlawed in 2005, a safer alternative was found. Sarabas three years old and so will be running a three kilometer race. She joins her group at the start line. Ali's driver waits at the wheel. As a consequence of the remote controlled robots, it's not just a camel race that's about to take place. The driver shouts to Ali, Saraba's in third place. But with this many camels, she'll have to fight if she's going to stay there. Halfway through the race, and something doesn't seem right. Saraba's falling behind. In the last kilometre, Ali's encouragement seems to work, but she's got a long way to go to catch up. Saraba comes in at 15th place. She wins nothing. <laughs> Exhausted, she's tied up to a post with the other camels to wait until the rest of the races are finished. Ali's pride has been severely dented. At the moment, Saraba's chances of becoming a royal are looking slim. Back home, Ariam's also making a sprint down the track. Unfortunately, once again, she's jumped the starting rope. <laughs> Saeed tells his driver to go. At least he can see how well she's running. She's left the other camels far behind and gallops for her life towards the finish line. It's going to be another long wait for Saeed. Meanwhile, the Sultan has been called back to the capital Muscat for more anniversary celebrations. His accession to the throne is commemorated every year. There is much to celebrate. In 40 years, the country has changed beyond recognition. Since 1970, the number of schools increased from 3 to 1,418. Tarmac roads from 10 kilometers to 125,000 kilometers telephone subscribers from 550 to three and a half million, hospitals from two to 60, and the life expectancy of a person from 49 to 76. Apart from the introduction of schools, the development that's had most impact on the daily lives of the Bedou 
is the motor car. Salim is driving back to his desert house. A trip that used to take him two days by camel now takes two hours. His children live in town, so his grandchildren can go to school. But for Salim, the desert is his home. Today, a baby camel and its mother are being transported to town, and Salim has come to help out. The baby wouldn't come without its friend, so they've had to bring the friend along too. <laughs> the mother will be lifted by a winch attached to this dry old tree. The others watch from a safe distance. The mother doesn't bat an eyelid as she begins to levitate. The friend and her mum have seen enough and set off to find their own way home. When these camels arrive at their new home, they'll be tied up to stop them wandering back. <coughs> Luckily, the Bedou are experts at reading the sand and can track a camel for hundreds of kilometers, a skill that remains valuable to this day. But it's a skill that may eventually be lost as more and more people are choosing a different kind of life. Salim keeps his camels here for the good grazing. 30 other families also used to live here, but now there's only Salim and his brother. Most families moved away when the first school was built in town, and gradually the rest of them followed. Camel racing may have salvaged the relationship between the Bedou and their camels, but it looks like their way of life will eventually disappear. <coughs> The big finals getting closer, and today North's having a practice run. She's just come home from a race in Qatar where she won a car worth $40,000. She's been doing well, but North now faces a new challenge. The length of a race corresponds to the camel's age. Having just had a birthday, North's moving up from four kilometers to five. Abdullah's helpers oversee the process. At North's level, she doesn't get to see much of her owner. Abdullah spends the season traveling from one race to the next, and today he's off to Dubai. After North's run, he'll get an update on her performance. Just before North sets off, a mystery camel sporting an orange robot joins their group. The mystery camel belongs to a rival trainer. It's his camel that takes the lead, and it's his camel that crosses the line a good 10 meters ahead of North.
If North can be beaten in a practice run at the local track, she'll have a tough job in the final. Abdullah was planning to accompany North to the final himself, but if he's not happy with her performance, she may not be going. After all, Abdullah's not short of camels to choose from. On the other side of the valley, it's been an eventful few weeks at Saeed's farm. Ariam has not been well. She caught a cold that was circulating the valley and has had to miss a number of races. She's being fed cow's milk and dates to build up her strength. Ariam will be racing again this week and it's uncertain how much her illness will have set her back. Saeed doesn't want to give up on her until she completes her race and proves herself one way or the other. For one young camel on Saeed's farm, it's already game over. This one-year-old female collided with another camel and broke her leg. Her short racing career is over. Saeed has decided to keep her for another month, but only in order to fatten her up. As one life comes to an end, another is about to begin. Soon, Ariam will be joined by a half-brother or sister. 35-year-old Malua has been carrying her calf for 12 months. When she's ready to give birth, she'll begin to make her way back into the desert. It looks like she may be leaving very soon. Saeed hopes that the baby is a girl. Camel racing may be an exclusively male world, but female camels are faster than males. There is nothing more valuable to a Bedou than a good female racing camel. Bolting each week and getting disqualified has actually helped Ariam prolong her precarious career. But with the new arrival taking Saeed's attention, he may be less lenient with her if she fails again. Ariam's time may be running out. One trainer determined not to give up is Ali. Saraba's being taken to the next race of the series, where she'll hopefully recover her performance. Before they go, Ali must take Saraba's robot for repair. The robot doctor who doubles as a household appliance repairman examines the robot. <laughs> Ali can't afford the $80 repair, but has borrowed the money anyway, determined to give Saraba another chance. He waits as Saraba's robot undergoes surgery. Meanwhile, Saeed has left Ariam at home to go searching for his pregnant camel. Malua left the farm a few days ago and Saeed's been following her tracks to find her. There's still no sign of the baby. Saeed will have to wait until after Ariam's race tomorrow before he checks on her again. Yeah. 
Ariam's at the start line and she's not looking happy. Saeed's son, Hamid, has only one objective today, not to let Ariam bolt. The handlers get the instruction to move into the starting positions. The next few moments will be crucial. Since the start of the season, Ariam has bolted in every single race. It's time to prove to everyone that she has what it takes to be a racing camel. To everyone's relief, the start is a success. Saeed kicks into gear and takes off in pursuit. Words of encouragement from Saeed. Ariam gives it all she's got. One camel has already finished ahead of the others. Ariam crosses the line in second position. It's a respectable result, and it looks like Ariam's off the hook. Straight after the race, Saeed rushes off. He reaches Malua just in time. It's a week late, but Malua's calf has finally decided to show up. It's a girl. Very good news for Saeed. After just 10 minutes, she's trying to get on her feet. But so far, unsuccessfully. Ramal. Ramal. Saeed names her Galia, meaning precious. <laughs> Hopefully, she'll live up to her name. It's the final race of the season. Today's prizes have been laid out in a tantalizing display. The track is soaked with water to minimize dust as the first camels head down to the starting gate. Abdullah greets his acquaintances while his army of men test out his fleet of yellow robot riders. North arrives at the track. She has made it, but there is one camel that hasn't. 
Saraba's last race was a complete disaster, and Ali decided it was time to finally admit defeat. But Saraba's story is not over yet. Back at the final, the first race comes to an end. North is led to the starting line. Abdullah's camels are the last in, and there's a scramble to get them lined up. The race official can't see what's going on and prepares to release the gate. When the gate opens, North is facing the wrong way. She careers towards the fence and ends up behind all the other camels. Now she has to run better than ever to have any chance of winning. As well as being bought by the Sultan, these camels are racing to win the very thing that nearly killed them off. Camels used to be valued for their ability to cross deserts and carry loads. Nowadays, the benchmark of a camel's worth is whether or not they have won a car. has caught up and is in the middle of the group with half the race still to go. The audience sit in comfort as the camels battle it out. Apart from a few dignitaries, all the people in the grandstand are trainers and breeders. There's no betting involved. The interest is in the prizes and the status that comes with winning. Out of the approaching dust cloud, the camels appear on the home straight. By some small miracle, the camel currently holding the lead is north. begins shouting North's name. She runs past the prize cars, one of which may soon be hers. She has done it. She's the first across the line and is brought to the grandstand for her victory walk by. While North basks in her glory, Saraba's been sold but not for the $60,000 she was offered last season. It's not just the young camels that suffer the worst fate. Saraba was bought for just $600 to feed 250 guests at a wedding feast. One week old, Galia now has a good spring in her step. Malua and Galia are allowed to roam freely for the first few months. 
but after just one week, they turn up at Saeed's farm. Perhaps it's a good omen. <laughs> after his disappointment with Saraba, Ali has just collected a new camel that he'll begin racing next season. She's a four-year-old called Gabba. Hopefully she'll be fast and make up for Ali's losses this year. Ariam has made it through her first racing season. After a rocky start to her career, there's every chance that she'll continue to become a great racing camel. Maybe next year, she'll be one of the camels at the final. North is now a royal camel. Taking first place, she'll fetch $400,000. She's also won a top-of-the-range 4x4, yet another car for Abdullah's collection. Adding up all his wins today, he will have made well over a million dollars. Abdullah started off life in a grass hut in the sand. Today, he's one of the richest men in the country. While some people have embraced the new world of high-stakes racing, Others have rejected it. Salim has held on to his Bedou way of life as his country has gone through massive changes. But he may soon be joining the thousands of Bedou that have settled in towns. He thinks it may be time to finally leave the desert. It was the discovery of oil in this country that first threatened the relationship between man and camel. It was then oil itself that rescued this relationship by funding the camel racing industry. The relationship between men and camels survived the biggest transformation that the region had ever seen. Camels are more valuable today than they ever were before. But what will happen when the oil runs out and the money stops flowing? What will the next chapter be for the Bedou people and their camels that race?